do it. What up, y'all? What's Coach, going on? Culture Cooks Podcast in the motherfucking house. Back up in it. Yup. It's been a minute. Yeah, it's been a while. We had a we had a uh, another episode for you where we got into like our DMT trip, but some shit happened with the recording and shit got delayed and we had like a whole episode for you. It was dope. We got into a little DMT DMT trip that one time, but yeah, we'll, we'll yeah, we're definitely that. gonna revisit that. But <laughs> what? Uh, unfortunately, yeah, just a lot of shit been happening in terms of like uh, since my last fight, so kind of put me on the uh, less enthusiastic side. But uh, definitely need to get back back into it. Uh, update everybody what's been going on and uh, and then yeah. what's, well, what's happening. been going on, bro. Might as well jump into it now. Um, so yeah, you know, I obviously made my bare knuckle MMA debut uh, in Game Bread. Fought a legend uh, in the UFC MMA world in Francisco Trinaldo. Uh, was feeling real good, real real good, man. And and uh, unfortunately ended up with a torn ACL. Um, it was like not even like he attacked a submission or anything. It was just literally um, kind of like a freak injury. So I have a torn ACL and I have surgery on the 26th of uh, December. So yeah, I'm just eager to get in and uh, start recovering. Yeah, yeah. The, I think the main thing after surgery, bro, is like you know, say like be patient and shit when it comes to like the recovery, the recovery aspect of it. Cause I was like, I. Well, you know, I had three surgeries on the same fucking, on the same injury and shit, you know, and, and, and that was just me being stupid and impatient and, and not taking the time it was to recover and shit, but, you know, um, yeah, just be careful with that shit, bro, you know, take care of that, you know. Yeah. And, uh, just like, fuck, how, what's, what's the usual, like, uh, healing time process on an ACL? I think now, after sur- like after surgery, because yours is a partial tear, right? Tear, yeah. Right? So I, I could potentially be a little quicker, but I, it'll all depend on like at the time of surgery. But um, for the most part, people recover. I would say like anywhere from six to nine months, but I've, I'm like aiming for like four to five, hopefully, if it's possible. But yeah, I'm not gonna man. rush into shit. It's just I'm gonna. Be- well, you could have got it. You could have got it done. Uh, Sooner, right? But weren't, wasn't it like, a, like all this? Oh yeah, insurance and then the fucking cost to do this shit's insane. And, Bro, and I asked like, them how much it would well, how be. Much did, how much did they want? Hundred grand. Hundred. If you pay grand, out of bro. pocket, yeah, for a knee surgery, ACL repair. It's crazy, but yeah, I had to like deal with insurance and then they made me have to wait like an extra thirty days. Um, so yeah, I was supposed to have the surgery December first, which is just coming up, but now it's pushed back to the twenty sixth. But it's all good. Like my knee feels good. I've just been like in the gym, like doing light weight, like just trying to strengthen the area, the muscles and stuff, and like body weight squats and yeah, like I I just feel like just because I don't know of who I am because they say six to nine months for like a regular person, you know. So I'm like I think I heal faster. You're I not think regular, I'm, bro. Huh? I'm not, regular. not regular. No, what we do isn't regular. So I feel like I'm gonna be able to recover. Should I do it regular? As long as my body is like healthy and 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 i'm putting the right things in it i feel like i'm gonna recover pretty quickly and i'm not gonna go crazy and look at the facilities that we have available yeah, to us. yeah we got we got the hookups bro yeah so equipment and in get terms back get back in there and shit back to training for sure know, my goal is to fight at, at, at like you know around well, six months into the new year yeah some of you know i'm i'm under like this fucking bullshit suspension but it's up like you know what, like two months now Wait no, what are we in? It's about to be December, so yeah, yeah. two months. Less two, months two months away and shit. So I'm like, about to start getting ready. Yeah. Well, I've been getting ready. As some of you that follow me know, I'm out here fucking just grinding He's my ass. He's been grinding for sure. You He's know, been training and, uh, a lot. And yeah, I'm just, I just can't wait to to get back in there. You know, hopefully, you know they they get a matchup for me. Uh, you know, soon. You know, because I know I was matched up with Ponzinibbio before, and hopefully I can get that back. Or there's a couple other dudes. Uh, in the in the in the region of like the rankings now, cause I like you know my last fight I was ranked fucking top fifteen, but I guess with all this bullshit that's going on, I guess they pushed me way back in the rankings and shit. But you know the rankings whatever. don't mean shit. It doesn't. I'm still one of the top dogs, but you know um, I'm just wondering what's next. You know, cause there's some good matches for me. There's um, in the like around that area. There's a few dudes that I know I haven't fought in a while, like uh, Phil Rowe. Yeah. Um, who else were we talking about the other day? Uh, Alex Moreno. Yeah, Alex Moreno. There's a, 
obviously the Ponzinibbio. Yeah. Um, there's a few matchups out there for me. Maybe even Max Griffin. That's the homie. But you yeah. know, it's it's all it's all it's all work. You business. know, and I'm just trying to get back in there and shit. It's and all business. To, yeah, just business. Yeah. <laughs> But yeah, no, there's definitely some really good matchups, I believe. And yeah. I think right now getting into a uh, lighter, bro. Uh, I, Damn, I can't believe we started to show without a lighter. I thought you always had a lighter on you. How's that? Smart. Uh, no lighter. I'm oh, going to take a step outside and grab right. a lighter. But in the meantime, I'm going to go over uh, uh, the fights this weekend. Uh, I went to the uh, Benavides versus Andrade fight. That was a great fight. Benavides still undefeated. Um, you know, went out there and just, you know, destroyed homie like everybody everybody predicted. Um, also, uh Jamal? Jamal? One of the Charlo, one of the Charlo twins uh pulled off a victory against Benavides' brother. Um I noticed Caleb Plant in the in the crowd. I said what's up to him. He was always all dripped out. He's always he's always fresh. But I saw him observing uh the Charlo fight you know and and uh i was like you know what's up like so i guess they're aiming to face to face each other you know which i think would be a great matchup personally i think caleb plant will win i'm a fan and uh yeah he goes he goes to the fit club and uh, i run into him a couple times he's a real cool dude yeah and, i've uh, seen i've seen uh like the fit club <clears throat> story yeah, and he's yeah but it, it was tight it was at the uh mandalay bay you know a uh, fucking legendary Hotel. legendary yeah. spot you know, it was dope to to go check it out. That's dope. Yeah, it was, yeah, it was a long dope. night. It was yeah, a long boxing, night. Yeah, the boxing. Uh, Bro, I was surprised. Out. I was surprised because um, <clears throat> the fucking uh, I was getting spotted, you know, all over in the crowd. Shit, like, yo, D, Rob, what's up? Oh, and usually whenever you're at fights, the people are gonna know who you are for sure. People yeah. are fighting. I didn't fans. expect it at box at the at a boxing event. Dude, nowadays but combat UFC, sports. Combat sports. No, but nowadays, bro, the UFC is if not bigger than yeah. uh, boxing because it's just like every it's week blowing up. MMA, MMA itself, like fucking um, people know even outside, even outside fight. of UFC, even outside of UFC. Yeah, it was like like the PFL. PFL, this weekend. Yeah. PFL this weekend had a million dollar tournament. The For guy sure. that you fought won won a million dollars. A million dollars, bro. At, at two weight bro, classes, you know how above hard what we and I'll just stop drinking, bro, for to fight for a million dollars. Like, all right, I'm gonna put the Put the mango carts down, bro. <laughs> the mango carts. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, bro, there's definitely some potential to uh, get get some PFL fights. Uh, down yeah, well, yeah, for you, I mean, yeah, that'd be sure. sick. You know, I mean, um, definitely something that uh, I would, you know, I would, I'd like. To I got get one fight left on my UFC contract, dog. You never know. Hey, who knows? you never know. See what the opportunities are. Once that's up, you know, I'm hoping, you know, I get resign, but. You know, uh, I also want to see what my options are. For sure. You know, there's nothing wrong with that. That doesn't mean I don't want to be in the UFC because UFC is the premier league. Of course, I want to be in the UFC, but I do want Just to make know the most money possible. Exactly. Just know that, like, people in the fans. Just so they know. The see, people but, that are listening. Yeah. Like, and people think so I'm not much in the UFC. Money. Yeah, there, people think I'm not in the UFC. I'm still in the UFC. No, he's still in the UFC. But the, just realize, guys, there's so much money outside of the UFC and all these other organizations. There's like a lot of money that guys are fighting and making. Like, there's a, for example, Olivier Aubin Mercier. He used to be in UFC. He just won two contracts, $2 million with PFL, went undefeated since leaving the UFC. So it's like there's a lot of money that can be made outside the UFC. So you got to understand I, the only thing that the UFC dominates everybody in is just legit. marketing and exposure. You know, like, yeah, it's and, and it's legit. You know, um, fucking uh, Derek Brunson won this weekend, right? Yeah, Derek Brunson. But he fought uh, a 170 guy. But, you know, still, yeah, still, still good sure work. Made, he's sure, old. He's sure an older some, guy. Yeah, I'm sure he made some good money. He said he made a lot of money. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and that's what I'm trying to do. You know, I could, I can go. I don't see easily, why not. Easily be a champion of of some shit like that. You know, for sure. Easily. The guy, the guy that uh, the the former champion, um, Sadibu C yeah, lost. He just lost. Yeah, the championship to the Russian guy, grappler wrestler. It's like Magomed Shari P Sharapov, some shit like that. But he's an American top yeah. team guy. He's good. Russian guy. Yeah, crazy daggy wrestler. wrestler. You just gotta knock those motherfuckers out quick, dog. Just put, pop, pop, pop. Just don't let them get on your hips. Yeah. You just gotta keep moving because they're just gonna keep coming forward. Just do like this ugly shit and come forward. So annoying. 
Annoying it's so it's such an ugly ass fight, you know, with those guys. They just get in your grill, pressure, 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 and then eventually get you down. But I mean, you stuff their takedowns. For they sure, they will fucking. They, tire. they will fold. They will tire. They will fold. They well, won't necessarily quit, but, but they there there hurt. is heavy discouragement when you stop one of these fucking if you these, can these get Dagestan wrestlers, motherfuckers. Get, when you stop their shit, and that goes in general with everything. When you stop somebody though. what they're good at. They'll break, you For know, sure. unless unless they, they got real, tired. unless they get real fight IQ, and they don't, they don't like, you know, and they got they got real good fight IQ, and they figure out, oh shit, I gotta figure something else out because what I'm, my go to ain't really working. fucking working. So yeah. you got that's why you gotta but be those guys that have that style usually only try to go that way. Like I mean, there's been a couple fights recently where I've seen the Russians where they've been pursuing the grappling, pursuing the grappling, pursuing the grappling, and it doesn't yeah, work out. I mean, think about it. In a three-round fight, you just gotta wrestle somebody, wrestle the fuck out of somebody for 15 minutes, which is Very they grew tiring. up. Yeah, well, yeah, they grew up doing this shit, so that's what they're used to, you know. Like I grew up throwing hands. It's different, for you sure. know. I'm like a West Coast fucking. <laughs> Yeah, you know, I'm, I'm a fan. I'm, I'm a fan friendly fighter, and I know that sure. shit because it's no, just the style. People like strikers, you know, being being a, like pursued to wrestle, 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 and defensive wrestle, hold against the cage, get back up. It's not entertaining to watch. People want to see hands. Yeah, bro. Some good ass weed. What we smoking here, bro? We smoking that Pellegrino from from our, our good folks at the Grower Circle. Circle. Yeah, the shout out to them. them. Yeah, they hooked it up. Uh, smoking some of that, and then we're enjoying. Actually, the uh, I got I got it set up. Flight for, bites. Oh yeah, it's flight bites. I've been grubbing on those. Those are fire, right bro. Now. Yeah, you, yeah. Know, you should because I was about to finish that whole thing. Earlier. I smelt I smelt the bag get open the other a couple <laughs> hours ago. Yeah, yeah. Shit, hey, PFL is kind of blowing up though, huh? Oh yeah. As you see, uh, Deontay Wilder. fucking uh, what's up with hey, what's up with uh, uh, Jake Paul fucking promoting that shit? He must be like. In a, I think he's an investor. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. That's what I'm thinking. I know but for so, sure you're trying to. But it's so random. Like Wiz Khalifa just like tunes in. I think so he's that, involved as well. It might be a group because isn't that like, like Endeavor? Isn't that like Endeavor group? Like just a group of much people with money that I have. Like I remember. I mean, they got a hundred million from Saudi Arabia. Yeah, a Saudi Arabia. The go- I don't know if it's the government or a sports company, or whatever, but I think it's a sports company. But they're investing; they just invest a hundred million. They got a couple up and coming Saudi fighters, and I think they're yeah. using PFL to like promote them. Dude, MMA is fucking huge out there, huh? Middle East, yeah, yeah, they Jiu-Jitsu fucking love it. And all the fucking, all the um, what do you call those motherfuckers with a lot of money? What do you mean? Huh? Like um, no, fuck it, forget it. Anyways. Yeah, I fought out there. It's dope. Oh, you did? Yeah, a bunch of times. Dubai, nice, Abu Dhabi. Nice. Yeah. Nice. I fought bro. UAE Warriors. That was what I was fighting before UFC. Sick, bro. Yeah. I Sick. fought a couple guys in the UFC that were uh-huh. pre-UFC. Like, before they were in UFC, we fought there. And then yeah. they got UFC. That's crazy. Hey, you know what's it's crazy? Like, everyone I, I, like I've ever fought, you know, like and, and, I, and I beat them. Like, I always want them to, like, fucking continue to do good. Like, yeah. Yeah, to do it's good crazy because, yeah, the guy good. that I fought. Yeah, the guy that you fucking fought won a million fucking dollars, bro. Yeah, he Come just. On. Yeah, Impa Kasanga. Oh, Perry. I fought Perry. Perry's fucking killing it right now. Like, yeah. Oh. Um, it makes me look good. It makes us look good. Uh, Impa Kasanga and I uh, won the 205 pound million dollar PFL tournament, and I fought him at 170 pounds. So it's kind of crazy to see that shit. And that was only a couple of years ago. Yeah. Um, so it's awesome to see him do so well. Fuck yeah, bro. Um, I love this shit. UFC's dope. Speaking of UFC, fucking uh, this weekend got some good fights coming up too. For sure. Um, the it's uh, an Austin card. Yeah. yeah in Armin, Austin. Armin Sarkurian and Benil. The Darish. homie Armin. We know him. This is Ar- we know Armand. Him Armand. Yeah. Yeah. Armand. He's been on the mats with us at Syndicate. Yeah. Yeah. Versus uh, Darius. He's, he's very good. good. And of course Darius. I don't know. I like I like Armand in this one. Yeah, the bro. Angle. Um, I I never got the chance to work with him, but from what I saw, he had really good striking and of course like crazy grappling. fucking grappling. Yeah, and shit, his grappling is really. I was really cool. impressed with watching him strike, and it kind of made me like want to hop in there with him, you know. But I just never got the opportunity. He he kept like a really tight circle. Yeah, yeah. I sparred with him. He he didn't really like striking with me, so that yeah. he did it like most. But he grappled me really good. He submitted me. Yeah, he's good. He's strong. Uh. He's really strong. I actually trained with him 
in Thailand at Tiger before he was even in UFC. Uh, we like did a lot of the when I was doing the wrestling with in Frank's classes. Uh, I would like partner up with him and stuff. And uh, and then you know fast forward a couple of years, he made his UFC debut against Islam Makachev, and and they went to a decision. So it's possible if he gets through Darius, that could be who he faces next. Yeah, um, he's up there. Be... He's fucking good. He's good. He's good, bro. Yeah, um, no, he's high level. Yeah, he got good boxing. Yeah, he got yeah. good everything. He's yeah. flexible. He throws good head kicks. He got good boxing. He can wrestle. Yeah, yeah he knows what's up. Yeah. Jalen Turner stepped in short notice to fight Bobby Green. Yeah, that's that's, that's a good be ass fucking matchup. Yeah, because, that's gonna be uh, interesting. It's a Cali fight. Yeah, both those dudes, California dudes. Yeah. Um, who you like in that matchup? Uh, I'm liking uh, Jalen Turner for his range. He's so big. Yeah, for his range, I definitely think he, he'll he'll Cause do like, great. Because like, Bobby's gonna Bobby's cover a lot quick of and fast. Yeah, he yeah. is. And uh, Jalen Turner just got this. He's just sneaky, bro. I think that he can hurt him. Um, yeah, he'll sneak in like maybe and some knee. head kicks in there uh-huh. or knees because um, you know I was just watching a little bit of like I follow him of course and uh, him training over there with uh, like T. Have you ever influence. trained with? Jaylen? Yeah, yeah, I've, I've trained. I've I've uh, trained Jalen a few times. You uh-huh. know, we're Cali boys. Uh-huh. You know, so of course we cross paths and and I was just with him recently in New York doing a thing for Monster and shit. Nice. So so that's the homie. But I sparred Bobby Green. Yeah, yeah. A lot of people have. I, I haven't, which is uh-huh. weird. Yeah, know, because he, he just randomly came in in the middle of sparring and just jumped in, and I picked yeah. him up on like the fourth round or something. Yeah, but uh, but yeah, no, I no, he's, I, he's, he's tricky I run as well. Into him all the time, you know, yeah. especially like in uh, smaller shows or events in California. But bro, like he's small, he's fast, but he's small, and Jalen's freaking big. Yeah. Like Jalen's bigger than me. Yeah, and he's just really, really tall, long. And real rangy, yeah. and he's real crafty with his shit. Yeah, I mean, just. But I, don't know, I got Turner yeah. on that fight. Yeah, Turner. I think that's a good bet. He'll probably be he the picks favorite. Him, picks him apart. Yeah, um, long. Fight. Yeah, with a jab, front kick, side kick, yeah. stuff like that. I can just, see it. I could, I could see Jalen Turner showing out. Cause this was uh this was his last fight was that fight against the hooker that war against hooker I think yeah so that was a war that was a war and I like Dan Hooker too yeah Hooker's so it the was man. it was it was fun to watch that shit yeah Hooker's the homie I like Hooker a lot where did they fight they I think, fought I think I might have been there I think they fought in Vegas yeah yeah I think I was yeah, there fought in Vegas T Mobile yeah I was there yeah. Yeah, that's uh-huh. that's uh you know Dan Hooker brings a banger every time he fights. Yeah, you know, so he's a he's a dog, but that's cool. Like, um, he and he was supposed to fight Bobby Green, um, oh. so he pulled out because he broke his arm, um, and then yeah, yeah and then we got Figueredo moving, moving up in weight class. Yeah. I was surprised to see that. I didn't even I didn't even know until I saw who he was matched up with. Uh, isn't he matched up with uh what's his name dude from the East Coast Boston? What's his name? Um. Font, Rob Font. Yeah, Rob Font. Is he from yeah. Boston? Yeah. Yeah, okay. He's, he's Boston, right. part of the cartel. Yeah, with, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. With, what's his name, the 45er, uh, Cater, Kelvin Cater. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. Font's good, man. He got sharp Durable. boxing. Yeah, good Durable boxing. fucking dude. He's been in some... Uh, Wars. Yeah, with uh, Adrian Yanez. Yeah. That was like a quick Beat fucking... Beat smack out of him. It was a yeah. qu- quick little fucking war, but yeah. you got you to gotta, you gotta like fighters like that, man. Yeah, I mean... Fucking uh, greedy. Yeah, Yanis really has been like, kind of on the decline lately, but Rob Font is like higher level for sure. There's, he's at a certain level. I, yeah, think, I mean, he's, I a, think he's, he's a fighter too I from like fighting for the championship. I like. I think I like him to beat Figueroa. Honestly, Figueroa is like a one punch guy, and he like comes with like real lungy. I think. I think Rob is just like way sharper in terms of the of, of like the technical and combination boxing. And I he think, has good pressure. Yeah, and I feel like he'll be okay if if. Uh, Figueredo shoots for like takedowns just because of like sheer size alone, you know. But uh, that'll be an interesting fight. But I like, I, I think Font will probably be the underdog, so that'd be probably a good bet to place if you guys get it at that line. I'll have to check the line, I haven't checked it yet. Yeah, but yeah. um, but yeah, Figueredo going uh, going up against Rob Font will be a real interesting fight. And then we we got the homie uh, uh, Khalil Roundtree got his fight moved, his oh, opponent yeah, up. pulled out, and then now he's got Anthony Smith. Which I think is a great fight for uh, for Khalil. So hopefully he can uh, take care of business and get that done here in Vegas, which will be a very interesting, uh, yeah, interesting scrap. So I'm pulling for the homie. I hope he gets it done. Yeah, that's the homie. And then I hope he gets a title shot. That'd be so dope. Um, 
Bro, so, he's he's a powerful ass. He's dangerous, gentle man. giant, bro. He's a dangerous well, he's, man. He's nice to us because we're homies. Yeah, yeah. No, he's just like you don't want to fight him, bro. Like for real, for real. He's super dangerous. Super dedicated yeah. to like. And he trains hard. He works hard. He does everything. He's on point and just like I said, fast and powerful. He's got like the some like the, the right. You know, corner. Yeah, he got a good combination homie, um, with Lorenzo. With, with Lorenzo, prime his, his at prime time performance. Yeah, his son. Um, he's training. I've hard. worked with him too, but I like I like um, Lorenzo. Yeah, Lorenzo's dope. Lorenzo's cool. He has a great mental focus, man. It helps you like push through shit and just has like this this kind of militant. For sure, it's definitely from it's a very military militant, bro. You know what I mean? Yeah. No, it's good. Like he's helped me a lot and pushed me and got me in good shape and ready for fights. Um, and he's definitely getting Khalil in that shape too. Fuck yeah! So, I bet you they're going. They they're they're going. Yeah, absolutely. They're going now. Absolutely. I mean, they're right there. So um, yeah. So hoping hoping Khalil gets that done, smashes Anthony Smith, and um, yeah. What do you guys think? Um, you know, in your comments, in our comment section, who do you guys think uh, D Rod should be fighting in the new year? Who would you guys like to see? Yeah. Drop some comments. Drop some mentions. Um, Let us know and oh shit, yeah. Wolf. Do y'all feedback again? Like, yeah. um, go back and forth, ask us questions. I know we've been out a little bit. We're gonna try to get one more episode before D Rod heads across the world. Um, we need to work on getting some like, like live feedback and shit. I remember, like we did that one that one time with that the one phone. episode. Yeah, yeah. We should try to tap into that I shit. Should, but like, on like IG live. Yeah. Our shit's like real, like we're trying to keep y'all, you know, On keep y'all updated and shit, you know. Shit, but for sure, we do what sure. we can. We try, we're trying our best over yeah. here. Yeah, you know? no, we'll get it done. Um, but we're yeah, just some stoner. Let them know where you're going. We're just some two. So oh, I'm going to Thailand. Like yeah. uh, shit, in a couple. Of, well, when you get back, you're going yeah. to Hawaii. I'm going to Hawaii. Yeah, if my boy's going to Hawaii for till Friday. I gotta stay and watch his cat. <laughs> and fuck it. <laughs> yeah, gotta watch the cat. Yeah, yeah, uh, but and watch the crew. Yeah, but after he gets back, I'm off to fucking Thailand. For sure. Finally, I know I told y'all I was fucking head out, so it's finally time. It's yeah. finally time and shit. So you, know, you guys so. gotta keep keep uh, keep an eye out on him. I'll 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 post some shit by myself while he's away, and then when he comes back, we'll hit it again. Uh, hopefully, when he comes back, he'll have a fight probably to announce or something. Like we'll probably drop a fucking uh, like a. a um, we can't do like a like a like a, like a webcam, kind of, yeah, webcam like kind a of shit. thing. We probably can, yeah. yeah. We can work it out. We can we can look at the options and yeah. do a Zoom call or some shit. But yeah, yeah. from Thailand, yeah. We'll, we'll I'll wake up from in the I'll Thailand. wake up in the morning and it'll be, be your sick, night. Bro. Yeah, I can't wait. Yeah, I've been like maybe you can get Frank in there. Yeah, yeah, get Frank in there. Yeah. You can do yeah, it from Thailand. Yeah, yeah, I'll be tight. Yeah, because I have a homie that's in Thailand, and he has, like, the studio equipment, so it's possible you guys can get something going out there. Um, but, yeah, that's going to be dope. I'm gutted that I don't get to go with you because that was the plan was to go fight, you know, smash this dude, get paid, then go and fight on the karate combat card, and then jump out to Thailand with this fool. But, unfortunately... Now I gotta just get the surgery done, um, you know, make that decision between getting like a graft from my own quad or getting a cadaver like from a fucking I don't know who. <laughs> Damn, but, that sounds but, fucked up. Isn't but, a cadaver the thing like you they stick in your dick and then fucking you gotta piss? Uh, gotta I think it is. Isn't Damn. It? Yeah, but they're not doing that to me. But I think it's the same word, right? Is it called a cadaver? Oh no, it sounds like it though. Cadaver is, is so the cadaver is basically the, an ACL from a like a dead body. That's what a cadaver no, is. I was a little curious about that. But I, the one the thing that you put in your penis, I'm not sure what that's called again. Is that a cadaver? It sounds like it, right? Catheter. Uh, Catheter. Oh yeah, yeah. That's Catheter. <laughs> cadaver. Look, Catheter. Damn. Ah. I was like, is this the same what word? The no, catheter. Yeah, that shit just doesn't sound like a good time at all. <laughs> Bro, I heard cowboy sticks one of those on his and his dick for races. Oh yeah, that's what he told us. Yeah, that's oh, wild. Eight hour race, so you have <sighs> to do it. That's hardcore, I'd bro. I pee myself. Yeah, right. <laughs> I don't want to stick a you. fucking right. tube down my dick hole. Just, it just sounds so uncomfortable. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Gives me like pain bumps. Yeah, yeah pain, yeah. Get pain, the chills. unnecessary pain. Chills. I get the yeah. chills. Think yeah. about it. Unless you use lidocaine, right? That'll probably make it okay. <laughs> Yeah. Either way, 
that just sounds terrible. But yeah, um, so that's like the two options. But because my ACL is partially torn, there's a chance that like they can do this other thing where they use like stem cells to like get the healing. And that could be like a way shorter recovery time. So I'm not going to know until the surgery. So in the meantime, I'm just like strengthening my legs and just focusing on like, you know, keeping the muscles strong there so that when I do have my surgery, uh, I can recover and come back, you know, strong. So that's the goal there. Um, and then, yeah, we wanted to um, talk about Snoop. Oh, yeah. Talk Snoop. about Snoop. You guys saw that with... Uh, hey, y'all see that Snoop say he's going to stop smoking? Yeah. I felt like, I felt like, why, Snoop? Yeah. I What's wrong? Was, I th- yeah, What's what wrong happened? with the homie, dog? I thought maybe he got, like, lung cancer or something, you know? That's what I was thinking, too. I was like, oh, no, not Uncle Snoop. No. I was like, shit. And then all these, things, all these things came out. And then I think, um, what's his name? Uh... Fuck, I can't remember the rapper's name. Another dude, but he's like, yeah, I'm quitting weed too. He was like another like Meek Mill, I think. Yeah, it was like Meek Meek Mill. He's like, thanks Snoop for like saying that for such a you know big exposure to say such a good thing. And then he's like, yeah, I'm quitting weed too. It turns out to be a fucking hoax. Yeah, it was all an advertisement (laughs) for like a cooking fucking an oven or some shit. Crazy, but great. It works. Oh, yeah, but I wonder how that fucking guy felt that quit smoking. He's like, I'm, I'll quit. And he was like, He's oh, like fuck. in Dubai. He sees like, oh, Snoop was lying. He's like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> so disappointed. Like, Hold it up. Oh, that's funny, bro. Yeah. And then, uh, yeah, and then there's all the fucking allegations. Do you ever? Oh, do you ever think you build like you'll stop smoking? Me, bud. I don't want to. <laughs> <laughs> I don't. I don't want to have a have to have a reason not to. Cause like I don't think I go crazy with it, honestly. Like, but who knows? Like maybe in like twenty, thirty years, like my lungs are gonna be all fucked up. I don't know. But for the most part, like I feel good. You know what I, I noticed? You don't really like hear too much. I mean, you would imagine with all the like the fucking resin and all the fucking like when you look at your bong. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like I'm sure my fucking lungs are coated with resin. Yeah. I mean, but I don't know. But I think it helps with us because we're fucking athletes. Yes, and we test our lungs, but our lung capacity is crazy, bro. When you really, when like, even like Billy taking big, yeah, because like remember with Billy with the DMT, oh, like yeah, uh, that was wild. bro, that I ripped that motherfucker. Me he was too, like, he's like, you usually, hey, he's like, he's like, you, he's like, he's like, uh, usually people are scared to take like, no, nah, he's like, usually hits. it takes like like three, four, like four, three or he four. Said four, yeah. So I'm like, so shit, I was like, fuck, I gotta take this shit down, so, down, you know what I mean? I had like, ripped though. But he Fuck said like out of that take shit. The so I, hits you can. I know, and then so I let it go, and then as I'm hitting the fucking second one, I'm looking at the fucking piece, right, the pipe, mm-hmm. and it starts to like fall down, but like in bricks and pixelated, and then like, do you know um, that movie Endgame, the Marvel one where they all turn into dust? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like Billy turned into dust and shit, and then I was fucking like, remember just like laying back. And honestly, feeling like fucking I died or something, dog. Bro. Uh, for me, my experience with that shit was like, fuck, I just fucking died. I overdosed or some shit. That's because it was like felt. It was like game over, the off switch, because then everything be- began to become like extremely pixelated and like just from when I had my eyes open, but when they were closed, it was a whole different experience and it was like nothing I ever seen before. And it was just like a off button. It made me like, you know, feel like I fucking died and shit, you know, on some crazy ass trip. I was like transported into like multiple dimensions. Just like everything was just morphing and like just different fucking shit. It was crazy. I've never seen anything like that in my life. Yeah, like fuck, bro. Like same There's, thing. It and was I've done, I've done mush, crazy. I've done mushrooms. Yeah, I've done all kinds of shit, bro. I've never experienced a fucking mental. Some shit is like crazy. Some brain shit, bro. Like no, tap into like we a whole nother realms. Like yeah, we there's realms, bro. Transport, <laughs> bro. So like, so I take my same thing. D Rod's like off doing his thing because we he hit it first and. I followed suit. I took in one massive take. And then my second one was like, as I'm like pulling in this second hit, like heavy, I start feeling that shit. And then like Billy's like one more. And I'm like, nah, bro, nah, bro. And I like sit back and like, same as like what D-Rod said, like, I felt like I died. And then, and then I accepted it and was just like, I've died. And like, this is what's gonna happen. And I just remember being in like a nuclear explosion 
And then I was like in some kind of capsule, just like traveling through the universe, bro. Like just seeing all these different things like planets Sweet, and like same thing like dimensions. And, and then I went through this like loop where like my eyes were open and I could see like certain things. And then it was like, I would see like DNA, like how like the breakdown of like DNA and shit. And it was like crazy, bro. But when I realized that I was still alive, I was so happy. And like when I like opened my eyes and realized I was still alive and was like tripping, it was just such a crazy experience. And it was like almost like I felt like I was in a simulation. It like kind of like decoded the, the, the simulation that we're in. Like That's I saw some shit like I saw like code in like in shit like breaking down and it was just weird. Like, yeah, I, I felt like I so, felt like in a simulation. Yeah. So my first fucking rip. Oh, yeah. I didn't really like we, it because I felt like we did I felt three. Like, I felt like I died, right? So like I started fucking it was, going through. It was like, kind of negative. I started having a bad trip because I was like, oh shit! I started like didn't really feel expect. yeah, and I started to feel like oh shit, I'm dead, and I felt like like I did like I couldn't let go because you know how you said like you felt like you died and you just let go. Like I couldn't let go because I was like, holy fuck! I got kids. Like I can't fucking die. Like I don't know. So I just kept like in that fucking struggle phase and shit and it felt like i died and like fucking it was like super dark yeah so i when i i got out of that trip i was like hell no nah, i did not like that shit yeah, it wasn't like, it was kind of yeah both of us is me as well i was kind of like, like no nah. i was like oh that kind of sucked i'm good i didn't like it that shit was like i went <laughs> it was stressful it was stressful yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah so we get left thinking like we had to right. change the vibe you know, that's what yeah, we Yeah, because he had, like, some we Pink some Floyd Pink Floyd, like, playing, kind of dark music. And I put on some Bob Marley and shit. Up the vibe. I'm like, yo, all right, let's just, just try something else and shit. Some Bob Marley shit. Because yeah. I didn't want it to end like that. I've heard so much, like, things about it. And it was like, I... For sure. Yeah, so we ended up putting on fucking Bob Marley's Greatest Hits or whatever. Yeah. And fucking, bam, I'm like, I didn't want to do it. But I was like, nah, I'm good. Yeah. But then I was like... You, then you're like, no, let's do it. And then I was like, oh, because right, he right, wanted to do it again, man. I was like, I don't want to, that to be my only experience, you know, because now yeah, I know what fully. to expect. So, the second one, yeah. like, I hit that shit and the same thing, boom. Except this one, I was like, all right, let's go. Yeah. You know? yeah and then, you knew what to and expect then again, it was like fucking just some fucking bizarre, fucking like weird shit that like made me. I kind of question, like, left me que like questioning, like, you know, how you say everything, like, decoded. Mm -hmm. Kind of like, Makes me like fucking made me want to look into conspiracy theories of are we living in a simulation? Because it was like kind of like, like yeah, like a little fucking like a little like a like you ever watch TV and it was like you get that static like fucking like yeah I know what you're talking shit about shit like warps and you go into like another station yeah, on, yeah. on an accident mm -hmm. and shit you know it like yeah. yeah cuts in cuts out yeah and it was kind of like that and shit but kind of like kind of left me questioning like yo is this what happens when you die bro like. Like, does your fucking, like, just fucking, like, your just... Your pineal gland just, releases DMT. Yeah, and you're just, like, you're like, gone into nothing because that's what I felt like when I was on DMT. Or, the second time, I felt like I was, like, nothing, like, except just, like, a conscious, you know, like, some, like... Or a, maybe, uh, maybe DMT is a transporter to, to the other dimensions. <laughs> because, like, think about it. Because, you know, <laughs> think about this. Yeah. Like, imagine, because when people die... Like, they lose weight, and people are saying that, okay, okay, call me a conspiracy, whatever. But, like, just hypothetically speaking, like, imagine your spirit or your aura or your energy or whatever is something when you die. And then, like, DMT is the transporter to send that energy to, like, another dimension, which whether that be hell, heaven, whatever you want to call it. But, like, it because I heard a conspiracy or whatever, a theory that... When you die, you go to a place that you know about everything. Because right now, we don't know about shit. Yeah. Oh, on my second trip, weren't you guys were saying like, because you You're didn't... like, oh, I understand now. Yeah, You're I was like, I get, like, it. I get it. I get it. Yeah. Like, he was saying he gets it in the middle of his trip. Not specific Bro, to what And then that time, I, I would like try to open my eyes and shit. And I was I would see you and you are like, good vibes, good vibes. Right? <laughs> yeah. Except this pool was like, you were in slices and you were like, just... Like just like going away in yeah. slices though, for it was fucking crazy. And then the That's cat, wild. and the cat was like running around. I was like, oh, 
fuck, bro. It's this wild. shit is wild. It's, and it only lasts like seven minutes. We, I timed it. Bro, that shit was insane. And it feels like it, eternity. Insane. Bro. Yeah, like, so the second time I did it, and same thing, really good vibes. It was the best trip. Like, I felt amazing. I felt recharged. Like, this, like I got energized from it. I ended up going to bed at like four in the morning that night. What did we do that night? You're like, you're we like, you're like, I want to do something. You're like, what is that? I, I want to go yeah. for a drive. It was like midnight. I was like, I, I want to, we, we did it at like 10 o'clock, and I was just like, Bro, you want to go for a drive? I was like, fuck, I don't want to be in the house anymore. I was like, I want to go do shit. When I think I ended up getting some I'm food. I'm alive, bro. <laughs> yeah, I was like, I felt really charged from that second time. And it was good vibes. I remember smiling through it and like seeing D-Rod walk. The second time you were like fucking like, oh, yeah. it, was, it was cool watching like. To see it. Yeah. yeah. And no, I'm it was like, a yo, good, the second I've one coming was out the second one. one. Coming out the second one, I was like, oh, fuck, that shit was sick, yeah, bro. Yeah, the second time was super sick. And like, <laughs> and I enjoyed it. Like, I felt bro, really good vibes. I felt the music was like a big part of it. It made me feel real positive and like same kind of similar, similar journey uh, that I experienced the first time. But it was like such a positive energy around that journey, if that makes sense. And then when I came to, I was like, I felt like I was charged. It was weird. Um, and then I was like, yeah, fuck yeah. I want to do the third time. Yeah, <laughs> so yeah, I was yeah. eager for the third time. And the third time for me was cool as fuck too. But like leaving that one, that trip. I was like, yo, that like it kind of made me feel like, like, yo, this is kind of playing like with death a little bit. You did kinda, say that. Like, I was like, yo, this shit feels like I'm fucking playing with death doing this shit. But I need to stop. Yeah, mm-hmm. and and my third time, it felt like super intense. I was like, Whoa! It was like it was not the same as the second time. It wasn't as positive. Yeah. It was it was kind of a little bit dark, but like I I kind of enjoyed it. And I, that's when I saw Patro oh, like, like moving in. It's like crazy shit you never seen before. Like when the eyes are closed, like it was like, like I put my head in the pillow and shit, and then and like when it got s- dark, and, and, and then it got dark, and then went into like a whole other like fucking like space with like these weird ass fucking like shapes and just morphing into other shit. Yeah, and all like, kinds of shit. I and mean. just like different scenarios and different like places. It was weird. Like just like constantly like just like fucking like they say. Um, that's what happens when you dream, right? Yeah, and it, it's relief. probably like a small dose of that shit. We have no idea how much. Probably like there. a small ass dose. There's no way but you can sleep and just going through all that shit, right? But think about it, like. But but imagine like DMT just being like dreams on fucking like turbo, on turbo mode. So everything is just like a rush. Maybe that's why everything is just like so, fucking like morphing and just like just constantly like it's never like just not one scenario yeah you're not stuck in one place it's not one scenario maybe yeah. like, like that it's shit like just a like, whole journey it's like, like a just, journey like like fucking overload on dreams bro like just fucking dreams are like just a like, multi dreams like like just yeah. overload of dreams like putting in all these different places i mean yeah it's also possible because like i also think dmt in your penile gland is much much stronger than dmt smoking it that's what i feel like and think about it. If we're dreaming for whatever, eight hours or nine hours, ten hours, seven hours, six hours, imagine how strong like the DMT must be from your penile gland to keep you dreaming for that time. You know what I mean? So I feel like when you must die, like there must be like such a massive release of it. So if anything, it's like way more than it would be smoking. That's why I feel like it could be like a transporter to somewhere. Because it's just like such a diluted amount. In your imagine brain. like just fucking dying instantly, like just... Like say it getting exploded like just pow. Do you like just like gone like that? Yeah. I don't know. Obviously. Wow. <laughs> it's but it's crazy. Macy question. Macy yeah. question. What the fuck happens after, bro? Like Yeah, you know? definitely it, like I've been wanting to do DMT. Like is for this shit really simulation? Because that shit time. felt like the shit that I saw is only like shit, only like just like it's like You don't ever see it. No, like it's never been recreated. It's never been visualized in yeah. you, in reality. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah. but in a way, you know, like, it exists. Kind of like just like it's it's weird. Like like a sh- like I don't know. It's like you fucking like just warp the fucking like like a glitch. The matrix. Yeah. yeah. You like broke you glitched. the matrix and saw outside of it. Yeah. I like my shit glitched and shit. Like it's weird. I bro. saw that. I, I like, saw yeah. that too. Like there was oh, like a. Yo. And I, it could see it, like I could see the codes, like I could see the algorithm, if that made sense. Oh, and I, deep. I've been like even like thinking about that algorithm that I saw. So it was like an alien language. I want to tattoo it. It was like shapes and like different figures. It was just and like, like yeah, really like art. Y- like yeah, it weird. looked like like a mix between like Egyptian hieroglyphics and like 
like English, and it was just it looked cool, and I was like, I would get that tattooed. <laughs> like, that was sick. Like, but uh, it was a crazy experience for sure. It's not something that we're like super eager to do again, like fast. Nah, but it's that. definitely something I would do again, like down the road. You know, maybe like once a year kind of thing. But on my birthday, <laughs> on my birthday. But it was a, it was cool to experience it. Do it with the homie Billy. Billy was the shaman. I've always wanted to try it. I'm glad I fucking finally got to fucking. Yeah, I I'd been it. wanting to do that for like over ten years. It was just really ironic, and and it just happened to be that my homie Billy, who cornered me in uh, in uh, Mississippi for the game bread fight, he happens to do it recreationally. So um, that was pretty cool to experience that with him. He's currently out in Japan right now doing oh, yeah. his thing. So that's dope. Japan. Um, so yeah, no, that's that's kind of been like the update of what's going on. Um, you know, just, you know, focusing on the new year, obviously being, you know, mentally strong, just being focused. My new goal, you know, is just focusing on recovery and my knee. And then from there, just getting right back into training with the boys, you know, like just getting right boys. into it. <laughs> and, uh, and just, yeah, I want to get right back on it. I wasn't, I felt like I was in such a good fucking place going into this fight. And it's just such a, sh I would have rather gotten knocked the fuck out than having to deal with a yeah. torn ACL, you know, so it's a shame. I felt real good going into the fight. Everything was just like perfectly aligned. Felt amazing in the back warming up. I felt good in the ring, uh, in the cage. I felt, I saw like what I was doing afterwards and it was looking great. Um, he had a lot of trouble with me striking, so I, I was feeling real good. Um, but, you know, shit happens. You get hurt. Um, I was down for a couple of weeks, pretty upset, depressed. Uh, you know, but now I'll be I'm trying to cheer this motherfucker up. So I'll be like, come on, come on, man, let's go to the fucking F1 shit. Come on, man, let's go. No, nah, yeah, D Rod's definitely helped out. Um, that cheered me up. I'm a life of party, dog. <laughs> uh, my ass, we're like, this motherfucker don't drink, right? So I'm all lit. I'm like, what's up, what's up, what's up, what's up? He's the annoying drunk guy. <laughs> nah, but no, it's it's been it's been better these last couple weeks. Um, you know, I'm just eager to get the surgery done. So once we get back. Uh, get into surgery, get that shit done. I'm gonna let you guys know. We're gonna track this progress. Watch me come back fucking ASAP <laughs> and killing it. So I'm excited for that. And oh, um, yeah, appreciate you guys for tuning in. Um, you know, just shout out to like our sponsors or people that help us out. Um, Grower Circle, Monster Energy. Let's go drink that shit, homies. Um, yo, I actually, I just want to talk about the Kaif sauna. How cool was that? When oh, we went yeah. out to the lake. Shout out to Kaif Sauna. Kaif Saunas, we took that out to the Lake Mead and, and we busted that out. That was actually really fun. Uh, I can't actually wait to do that again. Yeah, That's look into really it. Fun. Look into if it. If you guys are ever interested in a really high level portable sauna that you want to take out like camping or out in the wild or go to a lake, it's I highly it recommend it. It could also be it. like used as a tent too. It can be, the or tent like, is really good. If it's good. super cold, you could, that, should, that should heat up the It's a in. furnace. Like some people message me and we're like, oh, that's dope. Where'd you get that furnace? And I'm like, Yo, check out Kaif. Because, like, that you can go camping with that. It'll keep you warm. Uh, you could probably cook on it, too. Um, it comes with rocks. It's all kinds of cool shit Bad with that. Ass, bro. It was very easy to do. The process was super simple. Really wasn't stressful in any way. Yeah. And um, you could pull the fucking, like, flap things down so that you get air. I mean, uh, not air, but... Um, like light in there too. Yeah, like, so open like, up the. They got like windows sick. all over the tent. It was tight. It was cool. Yeah, I I enjoyed that experience. Lake was freezing. Up. I just I I, I, I didn't take fucking sandals, so I couldn't get in. The yeah, that water was true with the yeah with the rocks. But I jumped in there a bunch. Yeah. Uh, it was, Walking on rocks is not cool. It's hard, especially Fuck yeah. That. It's it's especially in the cold. But yeah, I got in there. It was fun. I enjoyed that experience. Uh, we got it pretty hot. Uh, we weren't there for too long. You know, just a couple hours. So like I said, it was convenient, easy to do took the energy out of us we were both exhausted <laughs> after but um but yeah no it was dope working with them and uh appreciate you guys for uh, sponsoring me but yeah sh grower circle always the homies looking out for us um smoking the good shit and then the homies got oh, his damn. homies as well yeah you know drinking that monster yeah. keeping yeah. you up at night monster and mango cart <laughs> i wish you were sponsored by mango cart Sure. I'd rather be sponsored by Modelo. Modelo. Modelo's yeah. time for shout out to them. Bud Light sponsor. Hook it up. Bud Light sponsor. <laughs> With the USC. You never know. You never know. Um, but yeah. It. I'll take it. Thank you guys for tuning in, checking in. Remember, send your questions, what you'd like us to talk about. Um, we'll get another episode before D Rod heads off to Thailand. And uh, appreciate you guys. Peace. Yep.